glory to the Lamb, Galilee Lamb. We're going to be reading out of Old Testament today at the Paradise Now Church Midweek Teach. We're going to be reading out of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23 and the verse is 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbour. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and, and tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them, therefore they shall not profit the people at all, says the Lord. I'll leave it there. So, um, The title of my message today is Best Be Honest. Best Be Honest. Pays better dividends. There's more joy in being honest. When you're honest, you, you know you're sowing good seed. When we're honest, we know our heart's clean. And uh, honest, the word honest relates to upright. Fairness. Respect. Humility. So the first two words of our primary verse, which is 30, therefore behold, I'm against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words, everyone from their neighbour or from his neighbour. So the first two words of the verse tell us how important it is to have an ear for what is about to be said, very important. Therefore, behold, just like when Jesus was coming and John the baptizer, who was no Baptist, said, behold the lamb. Something to really Acknowledge. Best be honest. And um, if we be honest with ourselves, a good place to start. <laughs> be honest with ourselves. We can move on from there and graduate. Uh, and even more than this, um, we see the very next word. It says, therefore, behold, I am. So to recognize uh, that it's the I am speaking here. Yeah. Most uh, most people, in, even in churches today and pulpits, take this with a grain of salt. They, they wouldn't care less. 
they just go on pleasure and plagiarize it. Other men's stuff. And uh, we know Martin Luther King Jr. was one of those plagiarists. He plagiarized pages and pages of material. And it all went hand in hand as the documented ev evidence shows that Martin Luther King Jr. was a whoremonger and a thief. So, whether it's major sin or even sin, it doesn't stop there, does it? It, it, it continues on. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And, uh, Some even laugh and joke as if it's not real, you know. As if it doesn't apply to anyone today. But I think, oh, the Lord, he, he, he ain't bothered with such little things like that. It, it's not a little thing. Lying is not a little thing. Lying is not the leading of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the truth. Even last, last week's midweek teach was about thieves and robbers, wasn't it? This is probably, you could call it surrounded by thieves and robbers, part two. I mean, God is saying here, Yahweh is saying he's against. He's against these proclaimers. He's not with them, he's against them. And it's very clear, isn't it? They're, they're copying and, and stealing what they're writing and proclaiming. You see, when God is against someone, he not, he's not giving them anything. That's why they've they're stealing. That's why they're plagiarizing. They're void of uh, the leading of the paraclete. They're, they're void of a clean conscience. When, when God is for someone, he provides. He gives them the tongue of the learned. When God has anointed and appointed someone, they have something to offer, something substantial, something even though simple maybe, but profound. Something that hits the spot. They're not lacking food supply in the spiritual realm. Their pantry is plentiful. So, God says here that um, their dreams are false and exaggerated. They're liars and reckless. Behold, Jeremiah 23, 32. Behold, once again, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to stray, 
to err by their lies and by their recklessness. You got all these proclaimers out there, they're door knocking and telling people they're saved. Oh, you're a child of God. You're saved. Do you believe? I believe. You're saved. This is what they're saying the Lord told them. That you're saved. Because you just believe. But there's no fruit of your belief. You just believe. There's no real fruit. See, when someone's truly born again, and someone's saved, there's fruit. Because you can't be born of a incorruptible seed and behave corrupted. Uh, with the exception, with the exception of uh, the babe growing and stumbling and making mistakes and a babe in Christ who's unaware and unlearned and needs to be taught. That's the only exception. But if we're born of incorruptible seed, wouldn't we, wouldn't our behavior be of the incorruptible nature? Each seed bears after its own. Oh yeah, we, 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 um, the Lord told us this, you know, and they're, they're prophesying away like they prophesied about Australia, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, we'd all love to see a, a mighty, awesome revival uh, come about in Australia, but let, let, let's be realistic. You know, we, we have to be sober in these drunken days of, of a drunken world, drunk with lies. And, and, and lying religions. Great South Land of the Holy Spirit. Are you for real? You've got abortion killing fields. You've got um, men marrying men in wedlock. Women with women. You've got politicians lying through their teeth. You got violence, hatred and racism running rampant, rape, bashings every day and murders in the street. Think about it. Great South Land of the Holy Spirit. Australia is a pagan country. Look, it's best to be honest. Honesty, truth, and humility, Jesus as preeminent. That's the way to go. So, got all their false dreams and exaggeration and their lies and recklessness. They have all the activities of, of, of the best social clubs, these churches today. All the trappings of little theatres and some have even made churches out of theatres. Ah <laughs> oh dear. They're even making museums out of churches and churches out of theatres. Times Square Church, New York City, there used to be a theatre. 
and it's still a theatre in its attitude. It's all about money and family first and women and women in the pulpit. They're still collecting their tithes and the Old Testament. Um, Levitical priesthood and once saved, always saved, coming from the pulpit. And I've been to Times Square Church, New York City, and I went and seen for myself. And I tell you what, it's as weak, weak as. There's no power. There's no authority come from the pulpit. There's no fire. No conviction. My wife was the second witness. She was with me. So I just left my literature in the church and gave it to the ushers. And they couldn't wait for me to leave. Because an honest man walked in the place, that's why. I ended up going outside and preaching Jesus, the real Jesus, the Bible Jesus. <laughs> oh dear. The Bible says here they're cursed by God. Cursed by God. Jeremiah 23, 30. Therefore, behold, I'm against the proclaimers, the prophets, says the Lord. Steal. Steal my words. I mean, you got thieves, and then there's thieves, isn't there? you got thieves... Thieves that steal money and steal possessions and identity fraud. And then you got those who steal the word of God from another man. And they say, this is what the Lord told me. No, it's not what the Lord told you. That's what the Lord told the other fellow. You stole it, rubbed his name off it with your eraser and put your name on it. <laughs> How low can you go? Cursed by God, I am against. Look, I'd rather have the world and everyone in it against me than have God against me. Because God is bigger than the world and everyone in it. Best to be honest. Okay. It says in that verse 20, uh, uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 30, therefore behold, and then it goes on, I am against, and then it says, the Lord who steal my word. What do you think of that? Right. That just loaded with uh, emphasis. These ones are cursed and deceived. Some of them even call Jesus Father. They say Jesus is Father. And in subscribe to the oneness theology. That that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a that's false prophecy. That Jesus is Father. Jesus is not Father. That's oneness theology. Jesus is God. Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. But three identities. As Jesus said, I go, I go home to Father and I send another. There's three there. So, that heretic T.D. Jakes, what a performer. He's in a little theatre, chappy. 
TV jokes, compromises with anyone and everyone. Rub shoulders and, uh, with the Pope. Praises Popes. Old TV jokes. Who can who could possibly be in right standing with God and not cursed and be rubbing shoulders with popes? Right? David Wilkerson, deceased of Times Square Church, he used to rub shoulders with the Roman Catholic priests and bishops and archbishops and all the rest of it. They'd be sitting in his church. I can tell you now, there's only one way a Roman Catholic priest or bishop or archbishop or anyone else of the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy will be sitting in my church, and that is if they got rid of their stupid robes and put on some normal, ordinary clothes. Because for me to have some priest sitting there in his clobber would be for me to side with um, an imposter because there is no priesthood of such existing in the church of the living God, Jesus the Christ. Jesus and no little lad at the cross. And the holy of holies was open. Now we can come boldly through the blood in the name of Jesus, come to Father. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Best to be honest, isn't it? Save yourself a lot of trouble, a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. I've counseled many people in 31 years ministering. And I tell you what, I've seen a lot of people, they're their own worst enemy. They're loaded down with all sorts of pain and heartache and because they're not honest with themselves. Because they're the problem and they think everyone else is. And they're the common denominator in every troubled issue. <laughs> They're not honest. Eh? It's a powerful thing, to be honest. We know Jesus was honest. We, we, we know he's a God of equity and fairness and upright and humble. Right? Hey? Yeah, uh, these deluded heretics like T.D. Jakes, they, he brings them in because he, he does his little performance and uh, turkey trotting around and hoop Lara and uh, people love it that way. But I don't know what they're going to do in the end. You can't lie like a pig in the mud and expect God to accept you on the judgment day. Jesus is not father. That is false proclamation. That's causing the people of God to stray and err because of their lies. Like the ones they would always say, causing people to err. They're not honest with the people because <laughs> they're not honest with themselves. You can't go on, you can't go on in known sin and say you're born of an incorruptible seed. 
impossibility. Right? Impossibility. And we touched. We touched on that verse last Sunday, didn't we? 1 Peter 1, 22. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love for the brethren, love one another firmly with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. You see that? We've been born. We've been born of incorruptible sin. So now we must walk it. And you can only do that by faith and obedience. You can only do that by the power of the Spirit. Not in our own strength. Faith is letting go of our way and taking on his way. You see, Father is in the business of weighing hearts. The hearts of men and women. He does that in different ways. With different people, different vessels. As the occasion demands. Look, he can do it. He can do it with a text, an email, a fax. He can use anything to weigh the heart. But he'll always use his word, and then he'll, he'll sit back and see what the people think. See what they, they, how they react and examine their behaviour after receiving that verse of scripture or that rebuke, or whatever it is. So he weighs the heart. And it's very clear that what the scriptures say in Second Thessalonians, if we just go there for a minute, Second Thessalonians and the verses oh, chapter two or oh, chapter one verse eight in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel. Flaming vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey. We can't argue that with them. There's those who don't know God. They've had all their lifetime to know him. But then there's those that know him but don't obey. Because you can't obey what you don't know. Flaming vengeance. Now to say otherwise is false in causing people to err. It's cursed by God. I am against those people. You see, heretics and false teachers, God's against them. I mean, they say, oh, well, God's not against us. Well, you know, if you, let's say, the Roman Catholic Church or Benny Hinn or, or the Mormons or the Baptist, oh, God's not against us. We're growing and growing and growing. Just like bindi eyes, just like thistles. You ever seen thistles grow? Man, alive. You can't hold them down. I've worked on farms, I've weeded gardens, not some little house, domestic house gardens, fields. <laughs> 
just about plowed fields with me hand on flower farms, you know. Weeds as tall as myself. That's not very tall, but I still. <laughs> and you actually, you wrap your arms. You're not pull them out with your fingers. You wrap your arms around these things. And they got roots on them. Uh, big as footballs. And you, you, you're getting down, right down. Till your your butt touches the ground, and then you get a good grip, and you stand up, and you pull them out. You got a a mattock to help you. You do that all day. You know you've done a day's work, and especially in a Australian or Queensland heat. Hey, it's best to be honest. It's best to be honest. That the Lord wants us to tell the people the truth, even though it's not nice, even though it's shocking. If we accept it and we abide in it, we're going to go free and we're going to be Save to the uttermost. Two Thessalonians one nine. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Everlasting destruction. Because they did not obey. The gospel. They didn't obey. Gospel means message. The message of Jesus. It's best to be honest. I am against them, the Lord said. I will curse them. That's another word, way of saying I will curse them. You know, people who sell the word of God, people who sell the word of God are cursed. They're, God is against them. People who add to the word of God, God is against them. People who take away from the word of God, God is against them. People who steal it from their neighbour or, or fellow minister or whatever and say, thus says the Lord. God is against them. These are all cursed by God. So you've got all these people and they say, oh, you know, God, God's not against us. Look, we're growing churches like never before. It doesn't mean anything. Whether you're Roman Catholic, Baptist, Mormon, JW, they think that's God's uh, signature of approval. <laughs> no, it's not. Just have a look at the teaching of these hovels. Have a look at the teaching of the JWs and the Roman Catholics and the Mormons and the Christadelphians and the Baptists. Have a look at their teaching. It look at, barely resembles Jesus' teaching. They're just well-oiled social clubs. They got everything from child-minding to to um, international Christmas Christmas present deliveries. We just can't relate what churches today and uh, what they do and how they operate to the gospel and the message of Jesus and the apostolic men. We can't relate, we can't associate it or align it. It's so far away. Huh? 
oh look, we're, we're growing this and growing that. Well, it's a, a well-known reality, in fact, if you read the scriptures, the true church will diminish as the days draw nearer as to Jesus' coming. It, it won't increase, it'll diminish. Because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, is how it's going to be before he returns, the Son of Man returns again. As it was in the days of Noah. And what was the days of Noah? Was it days of revival? The days of Noah, there was eight people getting on the hallelujah ship, on the boat, on the ark. Seven plus the driver, Noah. It's best to be honest. When you're honest, you're strong. When you're dishonest, you're weak. You, you, you don't have God's strength with you. God is not, God does not uh, give strength to the dishonest. You see these people here are dishonest. These prophets, they're, they're liars and they're dishonest. Liars are dishonest. Thieves are dishonest. <laughs> hey? God is not with them. He's against them. He didn't say, oh, I'm not with them. You know, you, you, you can be with someone or you can be against someone or you can just not be with them. But you're not against them, you're just not with them. But the Lord doesn't say that. The Lord says... Therefore, behold, I am against. We're talking God here. I am against. He is against. The Lord is against. Such people as these. Right? All of this, what's written here, under the heading of lies, and we know who the father of lies is, don't we? Right? That scripture twister of old. <laughs> That servant of all. The father of lies. So, these people are, are operating by the unction of the devil. They're children of the devil. These are children of the devil. We're either children of God or we're children of the devil. You can't follow two masters. No one can serve two masters. Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation for a minute. Revelation 21 and the verses 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You notice you put all liars. All liars. Because he means all liars. <laughs> Whether you're churched or unchurched. 
Then he says it again in verse 27, Revelation 21, 27. But there shall by no means enter the new Jerusalem anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, even if you just cause a lie. This one saved, always saved doctrine. It's a direct and absolute lie. Okay? Jesus is his father. Oneness theology. Okay? If you don't tithe, God will curse you. <laughs> These are all lies. These are all false uh, prophecies, false proclamation. And God said, now God didn't say that we're to do a Christmas season. Hey? That's a lie. You're, you're, you're causing the people to err. Make it a point to go down the shopping centre this week today or tomorrow and sit in the middle of the shopping centre and just be still and, and listen. Especially in the not so affluent suburbs and listen to the cries of the, the women and the children because they don't have this pagan season material and, and decorations to, to worship this uh, Santa Claus, uh, Father Christmas, the, or the Father of Christmas, and then Jesus, <laughs> the Father of Christmas. It, it came from Santa's loins. <laughs> hey, God said, I never. God said, stay clear of such garbage. Just like he said, stay clear of genealogies, family trees. Stay clear of the garbage. Stay clear of the false teaching. Of, uh, you can live in sin and go to heaven. Even though you're born of in incorruptible seed, you can't forsake sin. Well, the incorruptible seed is faulty, sorry. You're calling Jesus a liar. You're calling Paul the Apostle a liar. You're calling Peter a liar. Hey? God is against that and those people who do that. God said, Behold, I am against those who, who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and, and tell them, Cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Oh dear. Hey? Let's go to the writings of John 8. John chapter 8 and the verses. 43. And what does it say there? It says, Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus is speaking here. Because you are not able to listen to my word. <laughs> you are of your father, the devil, and the devil does desires of your you're of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it 
because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. See that he's not honest, is he? <laughs> you, you go around telling people they've got to be honest today, they don't think you're a child. They think, ah, oh, this, this bloke behaves like a little child. Of course. Of course. They reckon it's impossible to be honest in a dishonest world. Well. It might be Im Im impossible to be honest in, in, a, in a dishonest world and forge forward and gather the things of the world. But that's the price you've got to pay. If you want to please the Lord like Enoch did, John 8, verse 42. If God were your father, you would love me. <laughs> For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. The man Jesus speaking. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You see that? There's many people that can't listen to the word of Jesus, the Christ ministry, his mission, paradise now church. Many people. And they can't understand. They don't want to listen because they're not honest. Dishonest people don't want to listen to the honest truth. <laughs> I can tell you now because it just rips them apart. It's like a plough going through their heart. It's like a plough going through the fallow ground. Hey? To be honest is to be upright and fair. Be humble and respectful. Hey? How many people really respect Jesus? And you see the way they teach and carry on and live their lives. Do they really respect Jesus? Hey? I don't believe they do. Just the way they talk to me. Rude and abrupt. And some of them are worse than rude and abrupt. They don't talk at all. <laughs> they don't even open their mouth. At all. No matter what you did, they still wouldn't reply or answer. That's the greatest form of, of uh, dishonor and rejection and, and, and hatred and violence in the spiritual, there can be just no reply, just no answer. Just don't say anything and go away. <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't be going away. The, the message that the Lord has given me to minister before I was born. I'll be ministering this message, emphasizing the points that I've emphasized for 31 years till the day I die. Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophet, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. I'm against the prophets that say, thus says the Lord, who use their tongue and say, he says, <laughs> God said this and God said that. Oh, great revival for Australia. Really? Revival of evil, maybe. There's not one verse in the New Testament that tells us, tells any student of the word that there will be a revival 
before Jesus Christ comes in the world or anywhere in the world. Not one. Just says there'll be a great falling away. And there is. And multitudes have fallen away from Jesus. They're still in their little building. They're, they're still in their little uh, Pharisee house where they perform all their tricks and their pedophilia and there's church after church after church. They call themselves churches of Christ. And they have documented, recorded evidence against them as churches that are riddled with pedophilia. And they actually think that this is a church of the Lord Jesus. They actually believe they're on the narrow road to heaven. And at the same time they say, oh no, it's not difficult. It's not a difficult road, it's not a narrow road. <laughs> You're definitely on the wide road. No doubt about it, friend. It's best to be honest, that's what I believe. It's like clear shining after rain. When you're honest and straightforward. And your yes is yes and your no is no. Now because these people have chosen to lie and church leaders today and so-called prophets, they're not even prophets, but there's a lie there. They call yourself a prophet and you're not a prophet. They don't have the hallmarks of a prophet. They've never had the punishment of a true prophet. Right? They lie and say they're prophets because they got a piece of paper from some crooked religious business and they, they've paid money to do a course or they get some glossy magazine like um, Mr Armstrong, uh, Herbert Armstrong used to put out a glossy magazine, you know, A4, probably 40 pages, full colour churn them out by the tens of thousands. It was called the plain truth. It was full of lies. The guy wasn't even born again. He didn't believe you could be born again on earth. He said you're born again in the air when you get to heaven. Ah <laughs> oh dear. Right? When Jesus distinctly says you, you, you must be born of the word and his spirit before you go anywhere. That's the starting blocks. That's the starting point to be born again. Hey? The finishing point is to finish the race of faith. It's not a race of grace, it's a race of faith. Hey? God's power, it's just sitting there to be accessed by faith. Romans 5, 1 to 5. It's just sitting there waiting for us to access it by faith. And any fool can access it. You don't have to be a genius or intelligent. You just got to have faith. <laughs> Acts 4.13, uneducated and untrained, must have been with Jesus. How can they do and say these things? Love it. That's what I love about Jesus. It, it, he's made it possible, he's made it possible for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a child, it, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're backward, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, it doesn't matter what 
status, education standard, doesn't matter if you're black, white or blue. He's put everyone on, on the same playing field, same level. You get born again of the incorruptible seed, incorruptible, the word, Jesus, incorruptible. See, when we were first born, we were born of a corrupted seed of, of, of our mum and dad. It was corrupted. Therefore, we brought forth bad fruit. All kinds of bad fruit. And yet we know there's a lot of different fruit trees. And this is like bad fruit trees. There's a lot of different bad fruit trees. <laughs> and everyone had their own personal, private, favourite sin. Some were thieves, some were homos, some were liars, some were you know, serial pedophiles and murderers. But Jesus said, and such were some of you, but you have been sanctified, you have been cleansed and delivered. And He said that to the Corinthians, reminding them, <laughs> no such people will enter the kingdom. So much for the once saved, always saved. Best to be honest, isn't it? That's our message today. Best to be honest. Wise men are honest. You can't find it. It's hard. It's like hen's teeth today. People lie to your face and think it's a joke. Ah, ha, ha, I tricked him. Tricked, tricked him? You imbecile. You, know, you never tricked anyone but yourself. You've tripped yourself up. That's imbecilic. That's not why to be dishonest. So, because these church leaders Because they have um, chosen to lie and prophets, so-called proclaimers, choose, choose to lie. They've chosen to subscribe to Satan, just like Eve. Just like Eve. And what's going to come out of it? They're going to be cut off from God eventually. As the Lord put the angel with the flaming sword at the, uh, at the flaming gate. That would have been flaming scary. I tell you now. And then Father gives them over, doesn't he? He gives them over to, to Satan. Because they have refused to accept the love of the truth. Let's read it. Let's read it in the writings of 2 Timothy. Two Timothy chapter four, verse three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. What do you think of that? Right? And then on top of that, we have Second Thessalonians 2, 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, but they, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned 
who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in sin, in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is sin. Isn't that the Baptist church? They have pleasure in sin, don't they? They say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to be unrighteous. It's okay. You don't have to repent. This is the independent, fundamental, independent, new independent um, Baptist church. Hey? Faith, so-called faithful word, Baptist church, faithful. And they preach one saved, always saved. Absolute predestination. Doesn't matter about sin. You don't have to repent. Hey? Just believe. Just say, I believe and you're saved. And then get water baptised and then get yourself a Bible. It has to be King Jimmy, otherwise you're a reprobate. <laughs> if it's not King Jimmy. You're a reprobate. They call you a reprobate if you don't have a, use a King James Bible. Do you? wonder what the Lord thinks of that. Huh? What do you think about that? There's only one reprobate and there's only one that's cast off by the Lord and that's the man and the woman who don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit is to obey the truth because he's the, the spirit of truth. And these are the sons of God, not the born agains, not those who believe. These are the sons of God who are led by the spirit of God who are led by the spirit of the truth, who are led by the spirit of Jesus. These are the sons of God, nobody else. So you can ask yourself, are you led by the spirit of God? You say, oh, but I'm a serial sinner. I keep just going over my same old sin. That's not led by the spirit of God. That's led by the spirit of the liar, the devil. <laughs> That's not the spirit of God. The spirit of God doesn't have you a serial sinner. That would be a contradiction. God will be contradicting himself because he said, you're now born again of another seed, a totally different seed. This seed is incorruptible. Hey? This seed is pure. It's proven. It's of a holy spirit. What do you think of that? Hey? Does that paint a once saved, always saved picture for you? <laughs> oh, dear. It's best to be honest, isn't it? Hey? Best to be honest. So these men and women, they get into these pulpits. Yeah, women get in there too. But the cheek of the devil himself. And they're, they're blabbing on about love and kindness and family first and love your children. And these are the same ones molesting children like Frank Houston of Hillsong. Hey? Sleeping with multiple women like uh, Jack Hiles' son, David Hiles. 
of the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church going back. Old Jack Hiles was the the man with the yellow buses. <laughs> and he'd have all his children coming to his church to get a feed. Hey? I wonder if there was no food there, would they go? Hey? No food and no activities. I wonder would they go? And you didn't pick them up. What do you reckon about that? See, I like to be honest. I like to get right down to the bone and marrow gel and say, are you really in love with Jesus? Do you really want to follow Jesus? Are you really serious about this? Are you a genuine, bona fide disciple with like precious faith as the apostolic man? Or are you just going through the motions? Are you just thinking that, well, this is a good little social club to go to on a Sunday? while I'm sobering up <laughs> after Saturday night. Hey? So it's devilish, isn't it? Hypocritical. That we say, oh, thus says the Lord. And the Lord never even said it. Hey? You know, the greatest curse that can come upon men and women. I'm going to finish up. The greatest curse a man or woman could ever have is blindness to the unadulterated truth. That they've been blinded, they, they can't receive the truth. As Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed to you, Peter, that I am the Christ, but your Father in heaven. Father has revealed it. And you know, if unless Father reveals it, you'll never know. Ever. I don't care... Who wants to piggyback you to heaven? Who wants to apologise for your sin? <laughs> or who wants to be whipped for your sin? I don't care if it's a Prime Minister wanting to do poxy proxy apologies for other people's sins. Unless Father reveals it to us, we just don't know the truth. It's as simple as that. And I tell you what, when you do find and when you do receive and are granted the bona fide, unadulterated truth, it's not just scary, it's beautiful. <laughs> Beyond anything of this earth or any one of this earth. It's as they, as it is said in the scriptures of the uh, merchant who found the pearl of great price. After all, Jesus is the truth. And he sold everything. He got rid of everything just so he could have this one pearl. Every single pearl thing, pushed it all aside for this one pearl, that's talking about Jesus, hey, that's talking about our Lord Jesus, oh, the lamb he was slain, but he rose again, the people, they all cried 
to see my Christ crucified. But he rose, he rose, he rose again. Always remember, and I'm going to finish now, you know the Pharisees, the religious hypocrites, that they were not a, a single, there were many, they weren't like a, a single outcasted prophet who's, who's working against all odds. That they were many hypocritical, wealthy, religious creeps who, who, who in, were apt to impress the, the gulls, the gullibles of their day with their pomp. And many are impressed with pomp and their falsehood, and their huge temples, and their grand appearances in the flesh. Not to mention their long, hypocritical, introductory prayers. We've seen that, didn't we? Dragging on at that wedding of the old ginger nut, Harry and, uh, and Meghan Markle. all the dragged out ceremony of the hypocritical Church of England. <laughs> Here she is in a white dress. Really? White? Virgin dress? Really? You see, the Pharisees, they all put up a good showing in the flesh. And their hearts were far from God. But the true prophet, he'll stand alone in the midst of the biggest tsunami <laughs> and the biggest Eurocliders and walk straight through the midst in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, it's best to be honest. I can tell you today. It's best to be honest.